last video was about a found footage horror movie that I hated, so the logical thing for me to do is to review a another bad found footage movie. Uh, okay then. The time cuff on the review really starts for like a second before, just so it doesn't like clip up for me talking. Right, it's right here so you can like skip to that time. So yeah, this movie is trash, I'm sorry. I don't know how a six million dollar movie looks really bad. The characters are lame, the shots are just, some shots aren't even found footage. The villain is like pretty lame and not scary and only appears an hour into the hour and 20 minute film. It was rather boring or just uninteresting. Uh, yeah, that's really it. And the plan of the villain doesn't really make too much sense, I guess. Kind of, but it just feels... It doesn't... It just feels kind of random. So the film starts with some people in Cairo around the, this car yelling or protesting about this whole situation. And then again, we see really cinematic looking video, even though this was made in 2014. I'm not sure regular cameras back then looked like the ones used in professional movies. We then see more footage that looks way too clean and not found footage. How did anyone film this footage? It's obviously not found footage. This takes away from the immersion. We then see that there's an excavation site unearthing the huge pyramid and it's also heavily guarded. We then get reintroduced or introduced to Sonny and Fitzy who is the camera guy. That's his only trait. And Sonny is annoying. That's her only trait. Can't wait to spend a whole movie with them. Sonny talks about the new pyramid, which is apparently so different because it has three sides instead of four, but apparently they have to reduce since dogs are constantly barking, so why add this part in? It's not necessary. Also, I'm not sure dogs are allowed in excavation sites, so they are wild dogs, and I could be wrong. They then try again, this time with another main character, Holden, as they first try to ask him to, um, when responding to a question, to try and incorporate it into a response, which I guess reporters do. They talk a bit about the pyramid before we cut to Fitzy recording another main character, Nora, who talks about how this pyramid definitely doesn't have Akinatin, which I'm I'm very sure I pronounced wrong. No, I'm, yeah, I pronounced that wrong. This is because it takes millennial for San, or millennia for sand to completely or mostly cover this big pyramid, which makes a reveal of who slash what is in the pyramid even more dumb. Or not really, since we figure out why this thing is in the pyramid, so not really. Cut to Sunny asking Nora why archaeologists don't like new technology, which is because they discover more evidence which may put what they learned into question, even though paleontologists deal with that a lot. Get over it. So maybe months or even years of your life was wasted and what you learned was wrong. Okay, well, you're not perfect and we don't know everything about ev ev anything about everything. This also factors... Um, into Holden being like his only character trait, which is unrealistic because nobody is that shallow and boring. More complex in that movie. Then cut to footage near a satellite, which feels confusing as to how that's being recorded. We cut between Sunny, Holden, and Orn looking at a scan of a pyramid underground, which just shows how big it is. Now there's a tunnel leading to the apex, or the tip of a pyramid. It's seeing a photo of Nora and this guy named Michael kissing, which feels random. So the three talking about satellites. Just like I said, Holden hates them. Or, I guess, just new technology in general. We then see Michael using a rover to be a creep and spy on Nora dressing. Or undressing. Ew. Why are we supposed to like these characters? They're like, either creeps, uninteresting, or boring and bland. Again, make them better. Here's something you can do. Have Holden refuse to use technology because the only way he was able to bond with his family was by spending time digging up cool artifacts. Or something like that. And he wants to do the same with Nora. Have Fizzy constantly like to film because he wants to make films when he was younger or shows, but he had no friends. And really only like to talk to himself and do those like conversations with your younger and older self, I guess. Make Sonny an egotistical and smart person who dismisses everyone. Have Michael be a repressed creep who still has hints of his dark and weird past but tries to let go, but he can't. Something like that. You can make far more interesting characters based off the lame cliches that you made. Just have them all learn something, so I'm actually invested. I literally came up with that on the spot. Why can't you be better? Nora sees the rover and chews it out there, and we see Fitzy and some others, and hey, there's that kid who totally won't appear in the ending, just have a shitty ending scare, or maybe it's someone else, I don't know. Cuts to the next day where people, including the main five, are at the pyramid, and watches some toxic air flows out and messes up a man, and that causes him to have something, even though some other people are just as close, so I don't know why it didn't happen to them. Turns out the ministry, um of something from like the government once this whole um excavation site shut down even though that's obviously not going to work the reason because it's the reason this is happening is because there's a lot of violence in cairo holden barely puts up a fight and basically accepts it which is dumb and weird but nora says that the rover shorty can take a couple pictures of the pyramid and it'll last a couple hours shorty gets inside the pyramid and gets jump scared Ugh, cheap holden thinks it's a dog 
Sure, a dog could totally fit inside that tiny area and survive the toxins. Now what the hell are you talking about? You're supposed to be smart, not a dumbass. We later learn that there are zombie kitties, which is just okay. Really random unless that fits with the villain or the real villain of this movie. The rover looks around some more before being jump scared again by the zombie kitties and destroyed. So now Michael wants to get it because NASA will be pissed even though there are toxic fumes fumes and it's an undiscovered pyramid. I'm pretty sure they all understand and send a like team with masks and stuff like that. Nora decides to also film now, so great, more angles of film. A military dude named Corporal Shadid comes in and gets or Shadid gets mad, but it allows him two hours in the pyramid to get shorty. They get to work setting up something to lead the way back out of the pyramid and put on masks, you know, toxic fumes. They enter the pyramid and find Shorty messed up, or part of him. They also realize their wires ripped or snapped, so that's great and weird. Never mentioned again. They find the rest of Shorty, and the ground begins cracking, and Fitzy tries to move slowly, but everyone still falls. Because, you know, the ground breaks. They somehow survive the fall. I don't know how. I feel like one of them would have had their legs messed up, all of them, honestly, take off their masks. Michael then hilariously gets his head. A uh, leg messed up by a huge rock. And the unintentional comedy in this film, all scarce, is much better than the scares, or any of the actual comedy, if there is any. It just it takes away from the tension. It just makes the film kind of, like, un you know, unintentionally funny. Sunny decides to try and climb up the shaft to get help, but those zombie kitties knock her down. But Fitzy thinks it's Corporal Shadid, Shadid, even though why would he scratch her and, like, knock her off? I get it could be an accident, but why scratch her? What? Why? That just seems stupid. We then see carvings that tell a warning, I'm assuming about the twist villain, or the villain we don't see until like an hour in. They decide to leave Michael with a light, and that's pretty much the last we see of him. Because as the four others leave, Nora and Holden immediately come back to see that he is dead. Which also does make sense when we, once we learn who the true threat is. Also, there's music in this film, which again is unrealistic and confuses me. Why add this in? It takes away from the uh, realism and the immersion. They come back to Sunny and Fitzy and Sunny. Uh, gets annoyed and blames Holden for them being there in the first place when you all decided to come. They find Shadid who shoots some zombies or Shadid, whatever, before getting killed by the true villain, which I won't reveal until the film does. But this death, again, just doesn't make any sense once we learn who slash what it is. They get to a room that starts filling with sand and Sunny and Fitzy get out, but Sunny accidentally gets put, pushed into some spikes by Fitzy and some zombie kitties start eating her. Holden and Nora get out and scare away the zombie kitties. They get down and try to help Sunny, even though the best option they could do is just kill her. She's infected with a bite, bloodshot eyes, pieces of her are gone, and parts of her are impaled. Like, she, she's dead. Just end her instead of making her suffer. With Michael, you could live without both or even neither of your legs. Or either of your legs. Just get prosthetic ones. But this is just too much. She'd die. Late. She'd suffer. She eventually does die, and it turns out Holden is infected too. Amazing. They decide to film a message if people find them or release the camera. They touch a bunch of statues, which, op which opens up a passageway to an older civilization, I guess. They look around with some skeletons, and, or look around some skeletons, and Holden explains how some gods were benign and giving, whereas others were violent. And Holden says how whatever they're dealing with is violent, which again doesn't make sense with who we figure out it is. They find a pretty gruesome sight, that being a dead person with a hole where their heart is. Apparently, they're a Freemason that probably built the entrance our main characters went into, because, you know, they're grave robbers. Or, the Freemasons are. They find a journal that the Freemason wrote just before Holden gets his heart ripped out with some shitty CGI. How does a film, again, with a $6.5 million budget, look worse than, let's say, Troll Hunters, which had three less million dollars, or a $3.5 million budget? H how does that work? The monster also has a scream that consists of a doc stock dinosaur sound effect, so, um... That's great. Just amazing. Uh, Nora and Fitzy run away, and once again, there are many shots that are not found footage. What the hell, movie? Please be consistent. I know I did this, but I acknowledge that my film that included it sucked. Not just because of that, but still. Fitzy goes to try and fight the monster once and for all on tape, so people know what happens and stuff like that, and leaves Nora. Or really, Nora just stands there instead of coming alone. Don't split up. You can get killed. Because of that. We finally see who the monster is, Anubis, and I'll explain why this doesn't make any sense. Anubis was a rather chill god that led you to the afterlife, and I'm pretty sure guarded your burial. Or maybe that was for good people. He waged hard to see if you were pure and impure, and then took you where you belonged. This Anubis is violent and relentless, and broke someone's back and murdered people. I'm pretty sure he didn't murder you, or if he did, it was by accident. And this is just dumb and inaccurate. Granted, Anubis isn't real, but still, try and honor the myth. Why is he so violent? Why would he be stuck in a random pyramid? And yes, it is explained that, um, well, it's explained later, but either way, that just seems like a waste of time for a guy with such an important job. And the reason why he becomes so violent is just really dumb and feels just really random. 
whatever. Also, what's with the pacing? N nothing wrong with not seeing the villain, or, yeah, the villain for a while, but an hour into an hour and 20 mi minute movie, that's just bad pacing. Anubis eats Holden's heart, killing him, and walks around, and Fitzy and Holt and Nora realize the judgment room or whatever is the only way out as it's the final gate. They figure out why Anubis is bad, because he wanted to join his father in the afterlife and was searching for your for a pure heart, which I guess makes sense, but he seems so quick to be corrupted and violent. Like, he turned violent way too easily, and it just feels like, really? He went violent because of that? That just seems like, I don't know, that seems really quick. I feel like Anubis wouldn't have done that, and I don't know how to explain it. It just feels like, I don't know, that just feels really random. So, yeah, it kind of makes sense why Anubis is a bad guy, but still, really? He turned that quickly. He wanted to, I guess, searching for a pure heart. But why do you have to be so relentless? And they did apparently shield him off in this pyramid. But why couldn't he try to bother reason with them? Or, like, try to do it in a less relentless and violent way? Um, they climb up the shaft, but Anubis comes up and Fitzy tries to shoot him, but somehow misses. I could have done a better job, and I've, like, and I've never used a gun before. He gets grabbed and killed, I guess. Nora fends off Anubis and decides to idiotically throw the flare down instead of continuing to uh, use it like a smart person, and she pays the price for that when she gets out of the shaft, but grabbed and pulled down by Anubis. You did this to yourself. And for some reason, I guess she's alive, even though Anubis, even though uh, Fitzy's dead. Well, I mean, he's for sure dead once uh, Anubis like, crushes his face, but I'm pretty sure he was already dead or mortally wounded, where she, she's just like messed up a little bit more. Yeah, she wakes up uh, to tie by a rope and starts freeing herself all while Anubis for Anubis for some reason takes a sweet time extra extracting her heart. Why? Because he sensed she was the main character? She breaks free and stabs Anubis and the zombies kitties from before her show up and hiss at her, her while Anubis just stands there menacingly like a villain from a shitty mobile game or something. And for some reason the zombie kitties decide to gang up against Anubis because yay cannibalism I guess. Why now? Nora stands there for a while before reason realizing that, hey, this is a good distraction, and I can leave. She does leave and passes out and wakes up to see that kid, I think, from earlier, who, instead of helping her, takes the camera and treats us, I mean, tortures us, with a shitty ending scare. Great. Just... Just great. So, that was a pyramid. A waste of my time. It's a generic found footage movie with an interesting concept. It could have been better. The characters could have been better. The scares could have been better. Everything could have been better. The characters were just unmemorable, horrible idiots, just for the sake of moving the plot along. Why is it now that idi the characters are just so boring or intentionally idiotic just so that the plot can move along a little bit faster instead of making them smart or just make have them occasionally make some fatal mistakes like the thing? Uh, a better found footage movie that's like this is As Above So Below or what I've seen of it is better than this. So check the, that movie out if you want or I guess check this movie out if you want. It's a little entertaining but I still don't really recommend it. I hope you enjoy. I'm sorry, again, I stumbled. Ugh. I hope this video gets more views than the last one, because I only got like 40 views. And I'll see you in the next video.